Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Jay Every Day. I'm here with Miss Daisha Hicks, star, one of the stars of Coming for the King. And we're going to learn a little bit about her and her role today. So, welcome, Miss Daisha Hicks. Hi. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Okay, my name is Daisha, as you said. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, a little bit about myself. So, modeling has been the passion of mine since I was six years old. Um, I've also really taken to interviewing people. I love sharing their story through my reality. So one of my um, handles is called Just Die in Reality. Um, I really enjoy hearing people's journey. Um, and as far as acting coming into play, it happened with modeling. People would see me on runway, sh runway shows and they would just be like, do you act? And I'm like, what does this have to do with fashion? And no, I don't act. Um, I value it so much that I didn't feel like let me just pick up a script and read some lines. But it just kept coming up. So I was like, okay, let me try. I'll, I'll do a little something. And then I did get an acting coach, and he has a background in working with Dave Chappelle in theater. Um, and I just, you know, kept with it. I took direction from uh, directors, uh, my acting friends that's been in theater, and it's been doing well for me. Um, another thing that I enjoy in my pastime is fitness. I really enjoy working out. Body positivity is one of the things that came from modeling because I, I wasn't a small girl um, to runway people. I always was um, the fuller size girl. So I had to really embrace that this is my frame. And I wanted other women that were even fuller to let them know like you're beautiful, but health is your wealth. And you know, I encourage people on my platform to just feel comfortable, feel safe, let's have conversations. Um, and yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Okay, so talking about interviewing, how does it feel to be on the other side of the camera? It always is like a little nerve wracking, <laughs> but I'm getting a little bit better with it because the same thing I would tell my guests is like, just be authentic, just be yourself. Um, that's it. So it, it feels good. It feels good. I'm hoping that I'm giving people like who I am. And if not, then I'll do it again on another interview, but I enjoy it. I got you. So now jumping back to modeling, what was your passion walking down that runway or try to learn in those classes and um, do you still model? So yeah, I still model. Um, anytime I'm in front of the camera, that's modeling for me. Um, now that you have, so I, I always wanted to be in an agency. Um, I tried for uh, Wilhelmina, Ford, um, all of them, whatever. And I just, I didn't get picked. So it could have been my height, but I, I think it was my size or maybe just a look. Sometimes they might have already had a look similar to mine. Um, I just was super persistent. I, this passion was almost like an addiction. Um, as far as runway, um, people said I had a great walk. It was, I, I learned how to just take direction, you know. Um, pretty much that's it. And I learned patience through this whole journey. Really patience. So with me having my own social media platform like many others, I can create um, the narrative that I want. I definitely do it organically, but I can now hold the power and the way I want the images to come out. Um, I do have this thing that people say I have a certain type of sensuality to me. So I embrace that, but in a way that's comfortable for me versus, you know, trying to be in magazines where they're just like, you yeah, know, put your ass up more. I'm like, do I have to? Like, this is weird. I don't like, so now I can kind of like flow the way I want. So I just learned patience. I learned you're going to get a lot of no's. That doesn't mean there's not a yes waiting for you around the corner. So these are like some of the lessons I learned. Gotcha. Now, transferring that love from modeling to acting, how was that? Or have you done that? Hmm. I would say yes. Yeah. So I really, you know, I'm not, just, I'm not just saying this. I would say the most recent role as Lady Lorraine. Um, I loved it. I loved the dressing up. So once I was told, like, so this is the look, I'm like, Oh my god, I get to dress up for the I, I got so excited because, you know, that's a part of just like fashion too. So embracing that. I really love this role. Um, of course, something that's talking about Martin Luther King and those that were in his inner circle, that was kind of plotting on him or per perhaps like, you know, giving information to the FBI. It, it really just touched me to be able to step into that role. Um, learning about it in school, but like really the way that we learned about it on in the set, like we were looking at certain documentaries and stuff like that. It really just was an honor. So um, I was passionate about it. So it is transferring over and just like with modeling, 
I'm constantly learning, like there's more to know. I never feel like I've reached it. There's always more to learn. How did you connect with the character of Lady Lorraine? And are there any similarities between you and Lady Lorraine? Yes, um, the whole don't get me fucked up, I will go off on you. That, I love that, that's me. Um, just being kind of like graceful and dainty and ladylike, um, I enjoy embracing that. Um, Hmm. Being strong-willed, um, but also just being unknown. There was an unknownness. There was a bit of mystery around, like, what, what is she doing? So I was able to relate to the, her in that way. Okay. Now, connecting to the script, can you share your formula or any techniques that you use to connect to the script and to make you help you embody the role? Hmm. In all honesty, I needed to make sure, like, that was the only thing I was doing. Um, I wasn't really juggling too much. I felt like there was support from the cast and director, like in a sense, just to like kind of stay connected with it. Um, rehearsals really helped. So with the director saying like, okay, let's meet here, let's go over it. And then having direction there, then I knew how to like read my lines. I knew what to do. Uh, we would read things maybe like about three times, put notes by it, so I knew how to say a line a particular way. For me, I'm saying if you have a director that knows and knows how to work with you, then you're going to get the best effort. And also it's not too, I would say too, too married to how the script needs to be read. I've worked with directors that needs the line to just be the same way. We were able to say something a little bit different. So that would allow me to memorize it a certain way and um, make it my own. So with that freedom with the script, did it help you bring this character fully out, to flush it out? And did it help you with your scene partner? I would say yes. Definitely it did. Definitely it did. Um, let me see, which scene did I enjoy? I enjoy all of them. But it, it allowed me to connect to it a certain way. And um, I would get dressed up. <laughs> and read the script too. Um, I would put the wig on in the glasses and read. Um, I would also, I would give this tip. One of the things I would do is record myself and just like listen to it throughout the day. Um, I would do maybe three or, different, three or four different recordings. Um, I would record the whole script, like change somebody else's voice that was like my, my counterpart and then my voice. And then I would just do my lines and then just do it like as clean as possible. And I would listen to that and that would help me um, absorb it. Because one of the things that is why I was kind of scared of touching acting was remembering the script. I felt like I couldn't do both, like be the character and be like, what's my lines? So it's been helping me a lot through the years. Gotcha. Well, you hinted on it and I want to ask you now, what was your favorite scene? Oh, gosh. I don't, you know what? I was about to say, like, I don't know, I loved it all. No, working with um, my, my fellow co-star um, that played Martin Luther King, I think that, and he really looked the part, I felt like that really made me be like, I'm talking to Martin Luther King, I'm trying to save you, brother. Like, you got, I was really passionate. I love how it looked on screen when we were talking. Um, like, I'm trying to let him know, like, they're coming for you. Um, you gotta stop making everything a speech, like, and I'm sorry that God put this mission on you. So, that was one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Now, how connected were you to the thoughts and ideologies of Martin Luther King? And did you learn anything through this film with your research? Mm. All I could say is I could only imagine the, the ulcer he had. Like, could he, I, don't, I don't know. Just, like, all that pressure and just knowing that any day you could die. Um, that's what I connected to. A, a lot of empathy around wow, this man just really wanted to fight for us. And I, it kind of like disappoints me in a way when I, I hear certain things in the media, like, well, he was messing with women and stuff like, you know, I understand it's not right, but like the fight that he was going for for us, for the equality was a lot bigger than him being a mere man and not being perfect. So um, just gratitude for his mission. That's what I, I, it just got deeper. Gratitude for his mission. Beautiful. Now with the current state of things in 2021 mm. and the things that Martin Luther King preached on and those around him about the dream, where do you feel we at and where do you feel how far we have to go? So far, I don't feel like we're close to the mountaintop. I understand we got a black president. I understand the success 
of black entertainers too. I love it. I really hope these officers, um, people in the workforce too, I would like to talk about that. There's a lot of black women that I know and men, but the black women I know that can't even speak with a, a hint of, I don't want to say aggression. I, I call it um, confidence. Let's call it that. That can't even speak with confidence with their, you know, their employees that are white without being called sassy, attitude, this, the, and it, it breaks them down. So I feel like we have a long way to go so that we can see each other as people and not as a lesser race. Um, and these moments of, of, of celebration for the mere basic common human decency of you, you murdered somebody. So we do got some ways to go. We're making strides, but we got some ways to go. Beautiful, beautiful. What do you think we can go with the arts to help educate those around us, our culture mm. and everything? What do you think we can take it or what can we highlight more of what we need to see? So I really, hope, I hope we all, we, I hope we all really genuinely support the arts. If you have a friend that's doing a project, repost it, take a moment and look at it. And when I say take a moment and look at it, if it takes you a week, look at it, um, look at these projects, go to, you know, art exhibits, um, support films, support music, be honest about the music, say it's not really my flavor, but I, you know, just really show up and be present as much as you can in your network. There's so many people doing amazing things, but those that are close to you in your network, support it. Um, ask about it, saying, you know, where's, where's the link? Where's the information? I see how passionate you are about it. Um, just genuinely and truly support it as we support those that we absolutely love. Her. I love her right now. Her or Pharrell or, of course, Jay-Z. Um, show up in that way. Make, you know, just set aside some time to be like, okay, who's in my inner circle that is an artist? Have I tapped in and supported what they're doing? Okay, great, great. So last but not least, who is your favorite woman actress? Who is your favorite male actress, actor? And what is your dream role that you would like to play? Oh my God. Or dream character? I don't know my dream role. Um, so let's start with your favorite I, actress. <laughs> your favorite actress and your favorite actor. You know, I, dream I have to say I've always admired just Angela Bassett on the big screen. Um, Lynn Whitfield, Viola Davis right now is coming strong for me. I just I just appreciate seeing her so much. Regina King, I've been watching her since 227. Then um, there's other actors that just show up. Mm, but I just named those actors. I feel like I'm saying the typical names by saying Denzel. But I've just been watching them for so long, so it's really the longevity of someone showing up. But me and my mother were just talking about this actor. I'm sorry I forgot his name, but he played Pinky in Friday. <laughs> Clifton Powell. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, like the longevity of just like having this role here. It's, it's really longevity for me, and I'd be like, yes. Um, I also enjoy um, Jill Scott on the big screen. Um, who else? Another actor. Samuel Jackson. Um, I'm only saying black actors. I do like some. Um, I enjoy. What's his name? Why am I going blank? Uh, he played in Face Off with. <sighs> Nicholas Cage. I do enjoy Nicholas Cage. John Both of them killed it in Face Off. I can sit and watch that again. Um, so those are some. Um, I'm a movie person. Those are some of them. Oh, and my mom, like, I can't believe you didn't say that. So those are some of my favorite actors that I enjoy. It's many. Um, as far as dream role, I think something like romantic comedy. I don't know. I do want something that's challenging, and I will take that. But something that's a little light I'm waiting for, just to be silly. So if I can just juggle two roles at a time, that would be my dream. I just want to say that, like, do this and do that, and be like, die, like, you, you did it. You remembered each, like, you came up both ways. So something that's really um, painfully dramatic, uh, maybe dealing with um, like uh, dealing with uh, like a social worker that helps with young girls getting molested. Okay. That pulls on my heart. So I think I would show up powerful in that. So something like that. And then just like some romantic comedy, you know, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson got, you know, something with that. And he's Remember funny. Him and Kevin Hart, you? Not Kevin, just Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> but something 
something like that. Um, because I enjoy a lot of comedies. Right. Um, another actor, I enjoy Adam Sandler. Like okay. he's in my top. Like The Wedding Singer is mm -hmm. something that like it's funny, but it like makes me cry at the end, and I'm like, okay, this is this is silly to me. Like, but it, it touches me. So that's gotcha. more my flavor. Okay, in 30 seconds, pick someone in your head and give them their roses while they're still here to smell them. I hope I'm saying her name right. Her name is Akira Adele, I believe. Um, she is a fashion model, and I'm gonna say artist. I've been wanting to give her her roses because during Woman Woman's History Month, I ha you know something came up. I, I I do a lot of like content for myself and essential, and it reminded me of her. And I went on her page, and I'm like, she's inspired me. So Akira Adele, um, beautiful, just like. Uh, just like that nightlife that we used to have in like those like 2000 like two, the 2000s she's not like a 90s girl she's like early 2000s and she was amazing amazing in fashion amazing in confidence height, height size um, maybe like about five 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 and just lit up a room so I would like to give that's what I'm saying when it comes to arts like mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in the in the upper echelon right. that look at other people in another level and right, they right. kind of take that flavor for mm -hmm. them so I want to give her her flowers okay beautiful so tell us where people can find you at contact you at support you okay. and tell them about the latest project going out okay so thank you so much for listening those that tuned in um, J U S D Y E already my page is die already my other page is at underscore j-u-s-d-y-e in reality please follow both those pages i'm i'm heavy in my ig stories i love telling a story i love blogging from there ah uh, what else there's always something coming up there's always something coming up um but i love to just talk there's some ig lives coming up because i want y'all to see people that's in my network that's doing great things and i want to spotlight them so just stay tuned just follow me and you'll see everything you need to see Coming for the king? Coming for the king! concerned about the power of those I'm fighting. I'm more concerned with my people and the liberties. Their liberties? I refuse to fight and go to the depths of shame that Director Hoover has While Hoover spares no cause to break you? Telling all the press that you're some lying, Negro-ass teacher. I don't want this blood money. Nigga, you listen to me. You, there are more people out the quiet king than you think. Mm -hmm. Then we have people mm -hmm. such as yourself where we can just wave a few dollars in their face and then BOOM! Oh, looks like we got us a co-conspirator. We shouldn't be out here helping to kill or destroy this man. For God's sake, he gave everything up, all his time, to come here and help us! That doesn't mean we have to warm our fucking hands up all over the burning bridge. Virginia? Oh, no, no. I'm questioning everybody but the ladies. This is exactly what they want. They want us divided. They want us fighting each other. We need to pull it together because we can't win like this. We got to pull it together so we'll know who's with us. Together, it needs a difference. Let's get back to this later. Right now, let's focus on the man protecting the man of God, regardless of how you two want to move forward. They are coming. Know that our freedom is high. Baby, y'all hand me the joint. Time to get evil is high. Even when thoughts are the lowest, you can come see me in pride. Cause everybody on this planet, no freedom is ours. And every moment we deny this fuel for the fire. So when you look me in my eyes, you see it inside. Asking me one of my thoughts. Only my freedom in mind. Hand me the keys to the cage. I'ma put freedom inside. Freedom. Spread out across my chest. And if I die, then I pray it's my cause of death. Baby, my worth more than you'll ever know. And if they try to take a